Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over the particles section of chemistry for your OCR Gateway, GCSE Chemistry, GCSE Science. To go with this there is a free revision guide that you can download from my website and you can check off which bits you're comfortable with and which bits you need to do a little bit more work on. State symbols tell us what state something it's in, so an S is a solid. L is liquid, AQ is aqueous, and G is gas. If you see state symbols in an equation, the answer generally refers to them. If you see something that's liquid and liquid or aqueous and aqueous going to solid, it is going to turn cloudy. If you have a liquid and a solid, or a liquid and liquid and a gas is produced, you're going to see bubbles or a loss of mass bubbles or fizzing. We haven't always known that an atom had a nucleus and electrons orbiting around the outside. We used to have a plum pudding model where we had a large cloud of positive charge with negative electrons dotted throughout, a bit like a Christmas pudding, which is why it's called the plum pudding model. Rutherford and Marsden did an experiment to test the plum pudding model. They took an elf particle gun, and elf particles are positively charged, and they had a sheet of very thin gold foil. And what they did is they fired elf particles at this sheet, and the majority of them went straight through, which was a bit weird. Some of them got deflected a little bit, and some of them got deflected a massive amount. And this suggested that there was a centre which was positive, a small part that was positive, and then a large section all around which was negative. And this led to the development by Bohr of the nuclear model that we use today. The model of atoms changed quite a lot over time. You don't need to know all the details of this, you need to know that Rutherford was responsible for discovering the nucleus and protons. That Chadwick discovered neutrons. And that Bohr is our current, or developed our current model. Here we have the structure of an atom. We have electrons that are on the shells around the outside, protons that are in the middle, and neutrons that are in the middle. And this bit in the middle here is collectively called the nucleus. Protons are in the nucleus. They have a mass of one and a charge of plus one. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. They have a mass of 1 and a charge of 0. Electrons are in the outer shells. Their mass is 1 to thousandths and they have a charge of minus 1. On the periodic table you will see lots of boxes like this. This tells you all about the elements. This is the element's name, the symbol, and there are two numbers. This is the atomic number. And this one is the mass number. Now for these, location doesn't matter. Different textbooks, different sheets are going to put them in different locations. The larger one is the mass number. And the smaller one is the atomic number. The atomic number tells us the number of protons and the number of electrons in an atom. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So here we have calcium, the smaller number is the atomic number, the large number 
is the mass number. And if you want to find the number of protons, it is simply the atomic number, so in this case, 20. The number of electrons is also the atomic number, so again, 20. The neutrons is the mass number, which is 40, minus the atomic number, which is 20, equaling 20. Here we have two different isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-14. Working out the number of protons is exactly the same. It's the atomic number, so for both of those, that is 6. The number of electrons in an atom is the same as the number of protons, so that is 6. But the neutrons here is different, because for carbon-12, it is 12 minus 6, giving us 6 neutrons. And for carbon-14, it is 14 minus 6, giving us 8 neutrons. So an isotope is something that has the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And a proton is what identifies the identity of an atom. Here we have our wonderful, beautiful periodic table. It is a list of all the elements which are known to exist. Elements are a single type of atom. An atom is a very, very small thing. The word atom is actually Greek for uncuttable. And when they named them, they thought it was the smallest thing possible. The periodic table tells us loads and loads and loads of information about the elements, the range of elements that are known to exist. There are still loads yet to be discovered. A compound is two or more elements that are chemically bonded together. That's the important thing. Chemically bonded together. When you are working out the MR, which is the relative formula mass, you need to take all of the ARs, which is the relative atomic masses, and add them together. Now, the mass, remember, is the larger number of the two. doesn't matter where it's located, it is the larger number of the two. So hydrogen has a mass of one, and we have two of them. Sulfur has a mass of 32. Oxygen has a mass of 16 and we have four oxygens so 1 times 2 is 2 plus 32 plus 16 times 4 which is 64 add those together we get 98 the empirical formula is the lowest ratio of all of the elements in a compound and this is how we work it out we have a compound that is 75 percent carbon and 25 percent hydrogen so we're going to list carbon, hydrogen. Write down the number in the question and units do not matter for this. Not very often that I say that, normally lagging you to learn your units, but whether it's percentage, whether it's tons, whether it's grams, units do not matter. Write down the mass from the periodic table, so carbon has a mass of 12, hydrogen has a mass of 1. You then need to divide the number in the question by the mass. So 75 divided by 12 is 6.25, 25 divided by 1 is 25. You then need to divide both of these by the smallest number. 625 is smaller than 25, so we need to divide both of these by 625. 6.25 divided by 6.25 gives us 1, 25 divided by 6.25 gives us 4, meaning there is one carbon to every four hydrogens, and that is the empirical formula. You may have noticed from the periodic table that some things have 0.5 mass, so chlorine has 35.5 mass, which is frankly ridiculous because we can't have half protons or half neutrons. This is because the mass is the relative abundance of all of the isotopes. There are two main isotopes of chlorine, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. 75% of naturally occurring isotopes are chlorine-35. And 25% of the naturally occurring isotopes are chlorine-37. To work out the mass, this is what we do. You take the MR, 37, times it by the relative abundance, 25%. Do this for all of them, 35 times 75 and then divide that by 100. 37 times 25 is 925, plus 35 times 75, that's 2,625. Over 100, giving us 3,550 over 100, making 
five. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.